Thank you, Pawn. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Pat Carroll, MD Shah Alam from the University of North Carolina Wilmington, Center for Marine Science, and our collaborators from the private sector, Chris Bentley, Ted Davis, Clark Morton, and John Graham. Black sea bass, Central Pristis striata, a member of the Ceranid family comprising true sea basses and groupers. And the Atlantic species ranges from Maine down to northern Florida. And it comprises northern and southern populations that are separated by Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. This fish has been heavily exploited throughout the years. And in 1998, quotas were implemented. And since that time, the commercial and recreational catches have averaged about three to five million pounds per year. In 2005, the southern stock was declared overfished, but through careful management by 2018, it was declared not currently overfished, but catch and size limits and close seasons still remain in effect for this species. It is a protogynous hermaphrodite. They switch from female to male at about two to four years of age. So in 2013, the North Carolina Biotechnology Center leveraged a pilot hatchery at UNCW. And the goals were to conduct research to reduce fingerling production costs, understand the economics of producing fingerlings, and provide a source of fingerlings to start up growers. So what I'd like to do this afternoon is to um, summarize the status of black sea bass hatchery and fingerling production by explaining our current project being supported by North Carolina Sea Grant. So this is our facility on Wrightsville Beach. We have a 1.25 acre site. We have um, recirculating hatchery, nursery, and grow out systems for marine fin fish research. Seawater storage towers, bulk liquid oxygen distribution systems, and a geotube waste management system. The controlled environment blue tanks that we use for black sea bass are 2,600 liter outdoor units and they're divided into two independent <coughs> recirculating systems or RAS and the RAS components are standard components. And we stock each of these tanks with 15 to 20 adults and they're exposed to control photo period and temperature for in season and out of season spawning. To induce spawning, we implant villagenic stage females with pelleted GnRHA, and the females and males can either be strip spawned or they can be spawned volitionally in tank. The larval rearing system is in a climate controlled building, consists of egg incubators, rotifer tanks. We use 2,500 liter LRTs and the LRTs are supported by a RAS system, again, with typical components. The uh, feeding regime that we use for larval black sea bass is, again, pretty typical. Nanocroptis oculata, a condensed pace as a green water for the first two weeks in conjunction with enriched S-type rotifers, and then the larvae are weaned to enrich Artemia nauplii from weeks two to three, and artificial microdiets are added as early as 10 days post-hatching, and the larvae are completely weaned to these artificial diets by 25 to 30 days post-hatching. The nursery system consists of tanks of various sizes, ranging from 950 liters to 4980 liters, total capacity 36,000 liters, and they're divided into two independent RAS that have standard components. So we conducted an economic analysis of a hypothetical commercial scale hatchery for producing black sea bass fingerlings. It was informed using data from operating this pilot facility at UNCW, 30 year project life, capacity of 100,000 five gram fingerlings per year. Facility owner owns the land, works as manager, 6.5% interest on construction and equipment loan, 10% interest on monthly operating capital. Sited in coastal North Carolina, 0.5 acres of commercially zoned land with saltwater access, single metal building, and enough space for feed bins, waste treatment, parking and zoning setbacks. 
So this is a plan view of the baseline hypothetical facility, 8,400 8, square feet insulated metal building, concrete floor, electrical plumbing, high back. And the interior is partitioned into a brood stock room with brood tanks, larva culture room with LRTs, nursery room with NTs, live feeds culture room, egg incubation room, and lab and office space. And all the tanks and RAS equipment and their costs are itemized here. Other hatchery-wide equipment, seawater supply and storage, generator, blowers, liquid oxygen and monitor, sensor phone, geo tube, wastewater system, office and lab equipment. And the total initial investment cost for this facility was $778,000. So this is the production cycle that was assumed for this analysis. Spawning conducted twice a year, April 1, June 1. At each spawning, 324,000 yolk sac larvae are produced and stocked into six LRTs at 30 per liter. Survival is 15% to day 51. 48,000 one gram fingerlings are produced per cohort. Fingerlings are then stocked into six NTs at 1.5 fish per liter. So this is the baseline nursery density. 95% survival to day 105. 46,000 five gram fingerlings produced per cohort. So the crop cycle is 105 days, and with two cohorts per year, 92,000 five gram fingerlings are produced per year. Annual variable operating costs, feeds, hormones, chemicals, electricity, liquid oxygen, fresh water, waste treatment, office overhead, interest, manager's labor, part-time labor, subtotal $71,000. Annual fixed operating costs, opportunity costs of land, insurance, electrical demand, liquid oxygen, taxes, interest, subtotal $23,000. Total variable and fixed operating costs $94,000. So the break even price for 92,000 five gram fillings per year was $1.67 per unit. Now, as part of our current North Carolina Sea Grant project, we have determined experimentally that much smaller one gram fingerlings may be safely raised at densities as high as 6.5 fish per liter, and they have excellent resistance to crowding and survival in simulated shipping trials. So we conducted an alternative analysis of a facility that outputs smaller one gram fish at 5.7 fish per liter, and compared it with the baseline that outputs five gram fish at 1.5 fish per liter, and when you compare these facilities, the building is the same. And in essence, the smaller one gram fingerling facility has greater um, equipment and tank costs. But the crop cycle is reduced to 51 days. And so it can produce six cohorts per year compared to only two cohorts for the five gram facility. So when you compare the annual operating costs of these five gram and one gram fingerling facilities, Initial investment costs go up for the one gram facility, as do operating costs. But the output number of fish produced per year goes way up to 583,200. And so the break even price per fingerling is greatly lowered to 43 cents per unit. As part of this project, we have supplied interested startup companies with black sea bass fingerlings, and basically they came down to UNCW and live hauled their allocations back to their respective sites. We've also studied grow out and recirculating systems. This is our outdoor system at UNCW. These are 16 cubic meter units. And in one study, we stocked two of these tanks with 103 fish per cubic meter. Initial weight was 27 grams. And they were fed a commercial pelleted diet, final weight, was 682 grams after 18 and a half months, but with very wide growth variation, as indicated by these vertical uh, bars, ranging from as low as 300 grams to as high as 1,400 grams. Survival was 77%, harvest biomass was 52 kilograms <coughs> per cubic meter, and this study was run at about 21 degrees centigrade. These fish are quite hardy. They um, tolerate these high densities very well. One problem we've noticed is eye problems, including cataracts and Popeye. 
but we're learning over time that these can be controlled by very careful control of gas saturation levels in your tanks. We've also noticed infection by a gram-negative bacteria, Pastorella pisicida, and um, we've worked with Kennebec River Bioscientists to develop an inactivated vaccine. It's uh, very simple to apply using basically kitchen utensils on small fish and uh, at a cost of about a penny per five gram fingerling. Some shots of the wholesale marketing process where the wholesaler will drive their truck up to your tanks. The fish are harvested and euthanized in a slurry of seawater and ice. And then they're loaded into bins on their truck between layers of ice, taken back to their plant, and then weighed out into cardboard wax boxes in a finger lacing pattern, as you see here, between layers of ice. And they're shipped to outlets uh, in these boxes. Very price dependent wholesale um, system that ranges from, say, three to six dollars per pound, again, depending on size. We've also studied niche marketing in the state of North Carolina. Niche markets being seafood restaurants with average dinner entree prices greater than $12. Distributed whole on ice black sea bass to 90 restaurants in three regions of the state. And the chefs were interviewed and their responses were categorized, categorized by statistical uh, analyses. And assuming a price of $7.50 per pound whole fish, the annual niche market demand in the state of North Carolina was 395000 pounds. We've also done a preliminary ec production economic analysis of market stage black sea bass in a, again, a RAS system. Here are the assumptions, 1.5 acre coastal North Carolina land, 400,000 gallon total tank volume, under 40,000 pounds per year production. Fringlings are purchased at 47 cents each. Fish are marketed farm gate at two pounds average weight, 765 days post hatching. The break-even price was $5.95 per pound based on this scenario. That break-even price was sensitive to feed and feed conversion ratio. If these base case parameters can be adjusted downward by 10%, the break-even price would be lowered by five to seven cents per pound. Uh, break-even price was very sensitive to stocking density. If the base case density could be increased by 10% from 50 to 55 kilos per cubic meter, break-even price will go down by 15 cents per pound. And if it can be increased by 20% from 50 to 60 kilograms per cubic meter, break-even price would be lowered by 55 cents per pound. Um, just very quickly, this is some data that shows that black sea bass are able to utilize non-fish meal protein sources very efficiently. And this shows that they can take cottonseed meal in the diet at a full replacement level. So to summarize, fingerling production costs are being lowered, economic advantage to procure fingerlings at younger ages, smaller sizes, the pilot hatchery is enabling startup operations to access fingerlings, develop grow -all technology, understand markets, which are critical to developing business strategies. Research is needed to lower production costs during the grow out phases. Increasing stocking densities to greater than 60 kilos per cubic meter, lowering ingredient costs, grading to lower that growth variation, controlling sexual maturation during the grow out cycle and by selective breeding and domestication as we are currently working with wild stock. Thank you.